Okay. So, probably last two or three classes we have been discussing heavily on uh, PLL. So, we have almost finished the analysis part of PLL. Now, what we wish to do is try to see a practical application of it. Uh, so, that is actually DSB SC demodulation uh, where PLL has been heavily used. So, we will see that we will uh, later on when we will study FM, you will see also this particular thing PLL can be also employed for FM demodulation, we will we'll explore that part uh, and that is why probably PLL is one of the most important circuitry in uh, communication system. So, let us try to draw that circuit. So, it is nothing but you your let us say m t cos omega c t plus theta i that is what is coming. Okay. So, this is actually just m t is your message signal and uh, we have done a DSBSC modulation. So, uh, we have multiplied with a cos omega c t but what might happen it might have a phase okay, theta i which might be included in it. Okay. So, this is coming we take it into two arms and then we use two multiplier circuit over here. That multiplier circuit actually gets input from a VCO. So, that is where almost the PLL circuitry is being created. So, VCO will definitely create another cosinusoidal let us say okay, or it might create a uh, means uh, sinusoidal whatever it is. Let us say we, we create a cosinusoidal. Okay, so, V C O will create a cosinusoidal which is we term that as 2 cos omega C T plus let us say that is theta O. Right. Same thing is coming over here I give a minus pi by 2 phase shift okay, and then multiply. So, this will be some 2 sin omega C T plus theta O. Right this is what we get. Then both the arms are passed through a low pass filter. Okay. So, what will happen that multiplication term will be creating a this plus this and this minus this. right? Let us say the minus because omega c we have told already there is a matching. Uh, even if there is no matching we know that how to uh, deal with that omega 0 I can represent as omega c minus omega 0 and plus uh, omega c. So, we can always do that. Okay. So, frequency we do not have to really think about it is all about phase. Okay. So, there will be a uh, 2 omega c plus uh, theta i plus theta o will be there whatever it is and there should be a theta i minus theta o. Low pass filter will take that 2 omega c t term will be only having this m t cos theta e which is just the difference of these two. Of course, I am not writing that it is a function of t it must be a function of t. Okay. So, this theta e will be a function of t. So, this must be my output and what I do I need to have a feedback. So, I take it over here fine I put another multiplier circuit this is almost working like a squaring circuit. So, here also there should be a low pass filter. What do I get because it is sin? So, cosinusoidal multiplied by sin it will be sin a plus b sin a minus b then sin a minus b will be surviving. So, m t sin theta e will be surviving. I multiply these two right and then I pass it through a low pass filter again which is a very narrow band low pass filter. Okay, it is just around DC it is trying to pick that DC term nothing else. Okay. So, that is this thing. So, this is a narrow band low pass filter. So, what do I get over here is half or I should not say half it is just m square yes there should be a half m square t it is cos theta e into sin theta e right. So, that should be sin 2 theta e right that must be fed into this. And now, I am passing through a narrow band low pass filter. 
So, what will happen whatever that empty variation around DC it will almost uh, take a constant value. Okay. So, it empty might have uh, some variation right m square t because I am just taking a very narrow band uh, low pass filter. So, it will just take a constant term. So, at the input of the VCO it should be a constant sin 2 theta e which will be coming over here. Okay. Then from the VCO the output goes fine. See what will happen VCO will keep on will be keep on running till what time till it gets some input which is 0 right. If it does not get that he will keep on running right. So, when it is 0 then what will happen to this sin r is a constant let us say sin 2 theta e that must be 0. So, immediately what happens to the value of theta e that must be 0 that means it gets a means the VCO will stop deviating its phase that means this theta o will stop deviating when this theta e is becoming 0 that means we have a phase lock in theta i and theta e and once that is happening what will be the output let us see that it is the modulated output as you can sorry demodulated output because m t cos theta e if theta e is 0 this should be 1. So, I get m t back. So, this is where I get my output back. So, that is the beauty of the Costas loop. So, Costas loop actually is doing everything, it is doing this m square t term as you can see this 2 gets multiplied and I get m square t. So, that part is happening which was the original proposal that you have to square it. After squaring it is also putting a PLL circuitry because the main part of PLL which is a VCO followed by a loop in a with a low pass filter uh, with a low loop filter that is all happening over here. Okay. So, it has in a way both the things, but they are combined in nice way. So, that it is even producing the modulated output sorry the demodulated output that m t is getting produced whenever there is a locking. Okay. Of course, here also you can do the same PLL analysis you can show that if the phase errors are very large you would not be able to track it. So, all those things you can uh, do, uh, but of course, we have already done that for PLL this will be just a duplication. So, we do not uh, want to go into that direction, but what we can now see that a very useful practical circuit can be designed employing both the things the squaring filtering then PLL. Okay. And our original proposal just to remind you was something like this we had a m t cos omega c t you do pass it through a squaring circuit and then put a band pass filter right. This band pass filter must be narrow band like that low pass filter and whatever you get okay, after this you will be getting at 2 omega c t right you put a PLL which has a free running frequency around that 2 omega c t then you will get a pure purely tracked sinusoidal. Once you get that because uh, this PLL will help you to track even if there are some phase error. So, it will, it will also track that once you get that then you do a 2 to 1 frequency divider. Okay. You get k cos omega c t. After this you need to put a demodulator. So, this was the original proposal which has been very nicely uh, taken inside the PLL uh, means inside sorry inside the Costas loop. So, this was proposed by Costas and generally all the DSBSC demodulator follows the Costas loop because that is probably integrate the PLL uh, squaring circuit uh, and um, all this frequency divider and everything those are not required they integrate it very nicely and give you the demodulated output finally. Okay. So, that will almost end our uh, means discussion of circuit as well as means or uh, we should say system as well as signal for the amplitude modulated 
things. We have already, uh, I think few class back, we have already summarized uh, all those modulation technique and we have also talked about uh, means different uh, possibility of uh, imperfection that can come within this. Uh, we have characterized them in terms of their advantages, relative advantages, disadvantages in terms of power efficiency, in terms of what kind of system we can use it for, uh, can it be used for voice or video. We have also talked about uh, can it be used for broadcasting or point to point transmission. If there are, uh, if it is bandwidth efficient that is something we have characterized, all those things we have already done. Now the thing which is left and which is probably the most important part of communication is characterization of channel and the effect say it good or bad, uh, mostly bad, bad effect of channel and how you combat that channel. That is something which will be uh, means in next few class we will be uh, dealing with. Okay. Today we will probably start little bit, but uh, it is the channel characterization which will come next and uh, in the channel characterization one of the most important part is noise characterization that in presence of noise what happens to the modulation system means uh, whenever I put it in the channel there will be we have talked about in, uh, in our some of the previous classes that uh, noise will be present even in transmitter as well as in channel and in the receiver. So, that will be there plus channel will have some other imperfection so will which also will be characterizing. In presence of all this what happens uh, to our means all the modulation technique that we have discussed so far. So, we will try to means uh, we have done a comparison, but now probably the most important comparison which is coming up is in presence of all this imperfection or impurities of uh, channel who survives best. Okay. So, for that uh, two things we will have to do. One is uh, we need to understand uh, a system called uh, linear time invariant system. We need to understand the characteristics of that, that is one part. And the second part will be we need to understand random process because without random process or without the un basic understanding of random process we will not be able to characterize noise uh, or even interference. Okay. So, these two things if we wish to characterize we need to have a good understanding of random process. So, we will first we will try to uh, talk about the other than noise other imperfections which are little bit easier to deal with uh, and not many will be in detail dealt with uh, in this uh, particular course, but we will touch them uh, at least. And for the noise part we will do a very uh, detailed uh, discussion on random process. Uh, before going into the anal analysis of all these systems, okay, amplitude modulation to DSBSC to SSB, VSB, and all other systems. So, before going into that, we will do a very detailed, uh, rigorous uh, understanding or rigorous uh, teaching of uh, random process. So, this is something which we will do. So, today uh, what we will try to do is we will try to discuss about this LTI which is called linear time invariant system. So, there are two terms actually, one is this uh, many of you are already familiar with this, but uh, let us just give a brief overview. There are two terms very important terms, one is called the linear and the other one is this time invariant T i. Okay. So, we will have to characterize these two things separately. What do we mean by linear, linearity in a circuit? So, a circuit is linear, if we say suppose I give a input to a circuit and I get a output y t. Okay. Let us say if I give input as x 1 t, I get output corresponding output as y 1 t and I give another input x 2 t and I get a corresponding output of y 2 t. Now, what we can say if we give a linear combination of these two input. So, let us say c 1 into x 1 t plus c 2 into x 2 t, a circuit will be linear probably you might have done that in your uh, network theory uh, course. If the output is also similarly means uh, with similar scaling factor linear combination of the corresponding output. So, if x 1 t produce y 1 t and x 2 t produce y 2 t, then output of this must be c 1 y 1 t plus c 2 y 2 t. Whichever circuit actually 
provides this fu uh, functionality, we call them linear circuit. Okay. All those circuitry which are multiplier means or uh, those quadratic sinusoidal will not provide this characteristics. Okay. It must have a linear relationship that is something which has to be there. So, and you can do it for any number of signal. Okay. So, as many linear combination you will take always you will be getting at the output the linear combination of the corresponding output. So, this is something which has to be a characteristics of a linear circuit. So, whenever the circuitry is like that we call that as a linear circuitry and what is time invariant? That means, if I give a signal x t the output y t should be just a replica of the input only with a delay. Okay. So, if this particular signal whatever component it has okay, all those signals if I am talking about a time invariant circuit that means, it might at most provide a delay to the input. The output must be a delayed version of that nothing else there should not be any distortion of the overall signal. Okay. So, the output characteristics remains the same it just gets delayed as long as the circuit is time invariant. So, basically what we can say if I give a input as suppose this x t. So, y t must be something which is the delayed version of that. So, I can say x t minus some t okay. and there must be some other coefficients that uh, that can be there, but time invariant means the signal quality should not be distorted. Okay. That is the most important part or I can say that every component should be equivalently delayed whichever corresponding component it has. So, let us say I have x 1 t plus x 2 t what will happen if I pass it through it. So, it will be if there is a delay it will be equivalent delay to both those signals. Okay. So, they will be equivalently delayed nothing else. If there is a composite signal and at the output they are differently delayed then the composition will actually be distorted. It will not keep the similar structure of the input signal. So, the circuitry which provides this particular functionality we call them as time invariant as well. Okay. So, all the circuitry that we will be looking for now onwards are those linear time invariant system. Okay. So, whichever is linear the way we have discussed and time invariant and then from these two property it can be proven that suppose I have a system. Okay. Now, system is characterized by the impulse res response of it. So, we just give a delta over here and of course, there must be a output I, I will be observing and this is called the impulse response of a system. So, if I uh, provide a delta function at the input that uh, Dirac delta function actually and then whatever output I get that is actually the uh, means impulse response of that system and we also know that if it is linear time invariant then it or we should say it can be proven that if I now for this system let us say I put a signal x t then what should be the output? Output should be the convolution of this impulse response and the input signal. This can be just proven from those two property that if the circuit is linear and if the circuit is time invariant then I will be always able to prove that means I am not doing that proof over here because that is this is not the forum for that, but you will be always able to prove that it must be this the output should be this whatever signal you put always the output will be this and the entire circuitry is completely characterized by the impulse response which is this H T. I do not need any other description. So, circuitry is uniquely identified by its impulse response and corresponding transfer function which is just the Fourier transform of it. So, basically if I say this is H t if I give x t I get a output y t which is nothing but x t 
convolution of this sorry H T. Okay. So, if I just take a Fourier transform of this part y f is the corresponding Fourier transform of the output that must be convolution in time domain must be multiplication in Fourier domain that is something we have already proven. So, that must be x f into h f right. So, this h f is called as the as you all know called the transfer function of this particular thing whatever circuitry you are talking about or whatever system you are talking about. So, this either the h t which is the impulse response or the Fourier transform of this which is called the transfer function of that particular system. This particular relationship should always hold for a linear time invariant system or in time domain I should say this particular relationship should always hold and the corresponding impulse response characterizes the whole system. This is something for a linear time invariant system I will be always able to tell that. Okay. So, now what I will talk about is about a system which is distortion less. So, now my target will be to talk about a system which is distortion less. Okay. So, if I have to have a system which is distortion less, so you can now see that this x f and this y f must have similar characteristics except sorry y f should exactly equivalent to the x f. Okay. It should almost look like similar thing. So, if this has to happen then what do I first need that the amplitude of this or amplitude spectrum of this must be 1 because otherwise there is no possibility that x f and y f will have identical characteristics. So, any other things will create distortion. See any other things which are which might not might be still linear time invariant like a filter let us say. Okay. So, if I just employ a filter, filter will have some uh, characteristics h f will be suppose let us say first order low pass filter. So, it will have some characteristics where some of the frequency element will be means having similar amplitude they will pass some of the frequency element will be suppressed. And if our signal targeted signal x f is not band limited then his high frequency term will be attenuated more than the low frequency term. So, it is getting distorted at the output. Okay. So, filter always creates a distortion. Right. So, if I need to have a distortion less signal at the output, so therefore, that distortion less things whatever I am characterizing that must be a all pass filter. It should have h f which is constant 1 in all frequency. So, it just passes all the frequency with equal or I should say no attenuation. Right. So, that is the amplitude part what should be happening to the phase let us try to see that part. Okay. Earlier we have done a exercise suppose we have at the input we have two sinusoidal. Okay. For those two sinusoidal if I need to have that signal not getting distorted that means, both the sinusoidal should be equivalently delayed. Okay. So, what should be equivalent phase difference that should be created by while passing through or what, what should be the equivalence phase difference in each of those sinusoidal that will be created by passing through this particular system. We have already seen that it actually linearly scales with the frequency this is something we have already proven in one of the. So, that means, we can immediately see if we now start taking more number of sinusoidal. So, it must be linear whatever the frequency it must be proportional to that frequency okay, the phase that will be created. So, therefore, the phase spectrum should look like a linear thing. Okay. So, it should be always a linear characteristics stretching from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. What does this means? This means my h f must have an amplitude spectra which is 1 okay. and there should be a phase which is e to the power minus j 2 pi f and there should be a constant thing right because it should be linear with respect to the this is the overall phase. 
So, phase has already f. So, it this must be constant. So, let us say some T d I put. So, this must be that H f. Okay. So, whatever I do that must be the H f. If this is the H f, let us try to see the corresponding impulse response. Okay. Or instead of 1, I can also write some k. Okay. So, what should be uh, the corresponding impulse response? Okay. Or let us also forget about that. Let us say I have a x f, okay. forget about the impulse response that will come back later on. So, let us say I have a x f which is the input that should be passing through a system which is h f. So, that must be k into e to the power j 2 pi f t d, this must be my y f. So, whenever we multiply in a Fourier transform for a k is a constant term. So, we do not have to worry about that. Whenever suppose this x f has a corresponding x t, whenever we multiply with a e to the power j 2 pi f t d, what happens in the time domain? I will be getting a delay okay, of value t d. So, this must give me y t as k x t minus t d. If k is 1, this is actually the distortion less signal transmission. So, if I have a system like that, I can immediately corresponding time domain signal, I can see that that produces a distortion less signal, because it just the whole signal it delays it. That means, the signal characteristics is not changing and whole signal either it will not attenuate anything or if I have a constant attenuation, it gives constant attenuation to every time or every frequency component. So, it will again not change the overall signal quality. So, what do I why I am talking about this? So, that means in the channel whatever I am transmitting let us say m t cos omega c t that is what I am transmitting. At the receiver what I expect? I expect the same thing, but now in between there is channel. If I characterize this channel as a system, I need to ensure that channel is a distortion less channel. It should be linear time invariant of course, more than that I should be saying that channel must give me this characteristics. So, it must be a distortionless that means channel must be a all pass filter which is ideal. It has linear phase spectrum. If the channel deviates from there, now we will be talking about the impair, impairment of channel. If channel deviates either in amplitude spectra or the phase spectra. I will have corresponding distortion that I have to deal with at the receiver end. So, this is why we started with this thing. Once we understand this, we know that what kind of imperfection I should be getting and uh, means uh, for means what should I say for the mis misfortune of all the communication engineers, the channel is not a all pass filter, it is a low pass filter whichever way you see it. It is a low pass filter, it has different uh, amplitude uh, attenuation at different frequency component and the phase is also not always linear. So, there will be additional distortion which we will be characterizing in the next class that will be happening whenever you pass signal through any channel. So, we have to be ready to combat those things at the other end okay. or we have to ch choose our channel carefully. Okay, where we can almost see these characteristics. So, we will we'll try to characterize that in the next class. Thank you.